Before we bring the three curves together, we first have to understand the relationship between our short run aggregate supply and our long run aggregate supply. So let's look at this diagram in which I have both these curves. I have the same panel. I have real GDP on the X axis and my aggregate price level on the Y axis. And I have my two supply curves. Let's assume for now that we are at a point where we're producing above our potential. Whenever an economy produces above its potential, it's overheating its resources. So we are using our land, labor and capital and other factors of production above their capacity. This type of output gap is referred to as an inflationary gap. In this inflationary gap, I'm currently at point A1. Whenever we have an inflationary gap, we have shortages in our labor market because we are overheating our labor resource. The corresponding level of unemployment is going to be quite low and significantly below our natural rate. Labor market sh shortages in the long run are going to cause wages to eventually rise. Now, this is a long run phenomenon. As wages start to rise, they're going to cause profits of firms to go down and with declining profitability firms are willing to now produce less at any given price level so our short run aggregate supply curve starts to decrease but remember this shift is going to happen gradually in the long run because wages take some time to adjust they do not adjust overnight they do not respond to labor shortages immediately conversely we can look at a situation where your output is now below its potential again i only have the two curves because i want to see what the relationship between these two. I am currently at point A1 where price level is P1 and production is at Y1 and you can see this production level as I just said is below our potential. So whenever we have an output gap like this one we call it a recessionary gap. In a recessionary gap unemployment is now considerably higher and it's well above our natural rate and because of high unemployment wages in the long run are going to be driven down. Remember wages always adjust in the long run because wages are sticky and in the short run and as wages start to be driven down in the long run firms see increase in the profitability and that causes them to produce more over time and the short run's aggregate supply starts to increase so in the long run as wages adjust short run aggregate supply shifts to the right reflecting this reduction in wages the understanding of this response of the short run aggregate supply curve in the face of output gaps is very important in order to understand how the economy always eventually moves towards its potential. Recall that we also saw this in our business cycle diagram that the economy is moving towards its potential whether we are starting from an inflationary gap or a recessionary gap. Now that we understand the components of the model independently, let's put them together to understand business cycle fluctuations. Short run equilibrium in the ADS model is simply when your aggregate output supplied in the short run is exactly equal to the aggregate output demanded by firms. The price level corresponding to this equilibrium situation is called your equilibrium price level. Visualizing this equilibrium situation on our diagram, we have our intersection of the two curves, the short run AS and the AD, giving us our short run equilibrium GDP and the short run equilibrium price level in our economy. If we see any shock to the economy, any major economic factor changing, our short run equilibrium will also therefore change. So let's look at some demand shocks. Demand shocks can be positive or negative. In this case, I'm assuming to be a positive demand shock. So it could be consumer confidence rising, you're expecting higher income in the future, you're optimistic about the economy, businesses could be expecting higher profitability, it could be foreigners developing a preference for made in Canada goods, so they're buying more of our domestic goods being produced over here. Um, it could be any of those factors that shift the aggregate demand curve to the right. Higher government purchases, lower taxes, expansionary monetary policy, etc. So as soon as the aggregate demand increases, a positive demand shock occurs in our economy at our initial equilibrium price level, there is an excess demand and at that excess demand pushes the price level up. And as price level increases, our aggregate output supplied by firms also increases and we move to our new equilibrium E2. Now this is our new short run equilibrium in our economy, which is corresponding to a higher price level and a higher real GDP. Conversely, if you have a negative demand shock, it will cause your aggregate demand curve to decrease. And examples of these could be a stock market crash causing the wealth of households to go down. It could be firms losing business confidence, declining in their investment activity. In this case, as you can see, as the aggregate demand decreases, it puts downward pressure on the price level. And as 
as price level goes down, short run aggregates output supply decreases and our new equilibrium is giving us a lower price level and lower level of GDP. A third variable that you can account for over here is your unemployment. Whenever your GDP is rising, unemployment remember is moving in the opposite direction. In this case, GDP is falling, so unemployment must be rising. Given these very simple examples, you can see that the ADS model gives us the ability to forecast about the economy. For any given demand shock, we can now predict what will happen to the economy's GDP, unemployment levels, and the overall price level or inflation rate as a result of a particular shock. Next, let's look at supply shocks. And for now, I'm going to assume it's a short-run supply shock, also referred to as temporary supply shocks. These are also sometimes referred to as price shocks because short-run aggregate supply shifts primarily because of input prices. Let's first assume we have a negative supply shock or a negative price shock. It causes your short-run aggregate supply curve to shift to the left. It could be your wages going up, commodity prices going up, or productivity declining. As soon as we see short-run aggregate supply decreasing, we have upward pressure on prices and with higher prices, output demand decreases. At our new equilibrium, price level is a lot higher, but GDP is lower than before. Whenever we have declining output accompanied by rising price level, this situation is referred to as stagflation. It's a combination of the word stagnation and inflation. So stagflation is a phenomenon that is the result of negative supply shock. On the other hand, if you have a positive supply shock, your short-run aggregate supply curve is going to increase and shift to the right. And with this increase, we see downward pressure on prices, aggregate output demanded increases, and at our new equilibrium, our GDP is higher than before and price level has gone down. Now note that in the face of supply shocks, price and GDP are always moving in opposite directions. In our demand shock, price and GDP were moving in the same direction. So this model, as you can see, is now very nicely explaining the fluctuations in our business cycle. Remember those upturns and downturns in the business cycle? These short-run alternatives nations in your business cycle can be now explained through different economic factors changing. It can be as a result of a demand shock or because of a supply shock. For whatever reasons, whenever output changes, unemployment, remember, will always move in the opposite direction. So we can use our diagrams to explain the effect on three major macroeconomic variables, your GDP, price level, and unemployment. Let's look at now our long-run macroeconomic equilibrium. Long-run macroeconomic equilibrium is simply when our short-run equilibrium happens happens to be the same as our potential. Let's depict the situation on our diagram. So I know my short-run equilibrium is simply where the AD and the short-run AS intersect. And if this intersection point also corresponds to my potential GDP, I know my long-run AS will be vertical at this particular level. So in terms of visualizing this concept on the diagram, it's simply when all three curves intersect at the exact same point. So here's our textbook diagram, a much neater version of mine. As you can see, my short-run equilibrium equilibrium, which is given by the intersection of short-run AS and ED, is corresponding to my potential GDP. So all three curves are intersecting at the same point. Let's now draw our output gaps with all three curves on the diagram. So my short-run equilibrium output needs to be now below my potential if I want to show a recessionary output gap. And on the diagram, my intersection of short-run AS and AD needs to be to the left of my long-run AS, depicting this recessionary output gap. Similarly, we can now draw our diagram for an inflationary output gap. Here I want to ensure that my current short-run equilibrium GDP or actual GDP today is higher than our potential GDP for the economy. So on the diagram, when I draw the long-run aggregate supply curve, it must be to the left of my short-run equilibrium GDP depicted by the intersection of short-run ES and aggregate demand curve. The output gaps are actually always calculated as a percentage. So we look at the deviation of the actual GDP from its potential as a percentage of the potential. So for example, we could have a production of $85 billion of real GDP versus our potential of $80 billion as a percentage of this $80 billion. And this will give you a positive output gap of about 6.25%.
Now we have looked at this business cycle diagram many times and we have said that output always move towards its potential. This idea that our output will always move towards its long run potential level of GDP is called the self-correcting mechanism of our macroeconomy. And the aggregate demand aggregate supply model very neatly describes how this transpires. And in order to understand this mechanism, we will bring into focus again our relationship between short run aggregate supply and the output gaps that we saw at the beginning of the chapter. So remember, whenever there's an output gap, it's your wages and short run aggregate supply curve which will respond to that output gap and adjust accordingly in order to close that output gap eventually in the long run. In order to understand the self-correcting mechanism, let's quickly do an example. In this example, I'm going to assume that there is a negative demand shock and with the negative demand shock, you can see both price level and GDP have gone down. So the immediate impact of the shock is that my GDP has gone down, price level has gone down and unemployment is now much higher than before. In the short run, we were working with sticky wages. However, in the long run, remember now we are working with flexible wages. With high unemployment in the long run, wages are eventually going to be driven down. This is now because we have too many workers available, but not enough jobs. So as wages goes down, they're going to increase profits of firms and this is all happening in the long run. So as profits gradually increase, firms are going to start increasing their production. So short run aggregate supply curve is going to increase or shift to the right in our diagram. So our initial shift was from E1 to E2. That was the demand shock itself. But in the long run, because of wages adjusting and short run production increasing, we have moved from E2 to E3 on our diagram. And as we we are moving towards this long run equilibrium. You can see price is being pushed down and output is gradually increasing back to its potential level YP. The self-correcting mechanism can take a very long time and the cost of self-correction is the higher unemployment that we have to bear till output goes back to its potential level. It really depends on how quickly wages adjust. It could be over a few weeks, few months, or it could be many years before we see output going back to its potential. Let's do the same now for a positive demand shock. So we have the economy initially at its long run equilibrium, but there's a positive demand shock. This causes our price level to go up, GDP to go up, and unemployment to fall. Now output is above its potential. So we have an inflationary output gap and unemployment is much below its natural rate. Now in the long run, when unemployment is below the natural rate, it's going to push our wages up. Why? Because we have labor shortages in our labor market. And with overheating of our resources, wages are being driven up. As wages go up, profits of firms are going to go down and this is all happening in the long run. So as profits go down because of higher cost to firms, firms are going to gradually reduce their production. So that is your short run aggregate supply curve shifting to the left. As short run AS decreases, you can see our output gap is going to be gradually eliminated. Output is decreasing back towards potential while price level is now consistently becoming higher, well above P2. So in the long run, at our long run equilibrium E3, price level is much higher, but output is back to its potential level. So economy has self-corrected itself out of an inflationary output gap. The cost of self-correction over here is the higher price level that we'll have to bear as we wait for the economy to self-correct itself. So we see when the economy is allowed to correct itself in the long run, demand shocks are only going to cause temporary changes in production level, but permanent changes in our price level. So with a positive demand shock, the lasting impact is only on our price level and not on our production. Now, there are many economic factors besides a demand shock that cause our business cycle fluctuations. And one such shock is your productivity shock. So let's see how can we explain the effect of productivity shocks with the help of our ADAS diagram. So we'll start with the assumption that we are at a long run equilibrium at E1. If there's a productivity shock, and let's assume it's a positive product productivity shock, it will shift both my short run AS and my long run AS curve. So both of them are affected because productivity affects both my production in the short run and in the long run. So both these curves shift out to the right. Even though both are shifting to the right, the impact is much bigger on my long run aggregate supply curve. A much bigger shift is occurring over here. Why? Because changes in productivity really transpire over decades. So we could have some new technology being introduced today, but it could be many years before it becomes usable or affordable for households and firms to use it at a massive scale. 
we were initially at e1 and because of the positive productivity shock let's look at the short run impact on our economy in the short run my short run as has moved from as1 to as2 remember our short run equilibrium is always given by the intersection of ad and as which is now at this particular point so let's call it E2. So in the short run, my price level has gone down because of the positive productivity shock and GDP is definitely higher than before. So we are at a higher output level Y2. With higher output, my unemployment is comparatively lower than before. So how will the economy now self-correct itself from this particular point to its potential level? So in order to see that, we have to identify the output gap. In this particular case, we are at Y2, but note that that this Y2 is still a lot lower than my new potential because with productivity I'm no longer working with my old potential my old potential GDP and therefore the initial long-run aggregate supply have become redundant so we have to now compare our current short-run equilibrium output to our new potential which is still a lot higher than where we are at today for the economy this is therefore a recessionary gap and in the recessionary gap we are not using our resources to their full potential there is high unemployment and it's going to drive our wages down as wages are driven down in the long run short run aggregate supply is going to increase again why because wages are a cost for firms so, so with declining wages their profitability increases they are willing to produce a lot more and as they will produce more short run as firms further increases to the right and it keeps on increasing till this output gap is eliminated and output is at its new potential level E3. Note that throughout this whole process my aggregate demand curve did not change as we move from E1 to E2 we had initial movement along the AD curve over here and as short run aggregate supply further moved out to the right it pushed prices further down causing our aggregate output demanded to continuously increase and overall output is converging towards our new potential so in terms of our business cycle fluctuations we're always moving towards our potential whether it be because of demand shocks or because of supply shocks and the adjustment mechanism will always happen through your wages responding to the output gap and your short run aggregate supply curve moving in the appropriate direction